Hello and welcome to My Craft Room. I'm Anthony Minnis. FMM have been in contact with me and asked if I would do a tutorial for you guys to follow at home. So that's exactly what I've done using some of their brilliant products that are available direct from their website. So what I've come up with is a little plaque um, using some of their cutters. So the cutters in this particular um, project are the rose leaf cutter, the easy rose cutter and an alphabet there as well. Now obviously I've put the words love, forever, dream, always and believe, but it's entirely up to you to personalise it however you wish. So I hope you can join me um, going through this tutorial with you step by step. Now if you're interested in buying the products direct from FMM, just go to their website which is www.fmmfuncraft.com. Well, without further ado, let's get crafting. Well, you've seen the actual project. Um, now I'm going to show you how I actually created it. So all of the main products in uh, this demonstration are from FMM Fun Crafts. Now, FMM have been around for 75 years. So they do lots of different things. Mainly it's cake decorating, but there's also their craft side as well. Hence the FMM Fun Crafts. I'm going to be using two different types of clay. We have the Soft Then Strong. This is a fantastic clay. Really, really love this one. It's an air drying polymer clay. So we're going to be using that one with some moulds. And this one here is the really, really important one. It's the bright and light air drying clay. So again, no kiln or ovens required to actually set this clay. And what we're going to be using this one for is to actually create the flowers. So without further ado, let's get into making some of those roses that you saw on that project. Now, the most important thing where it comes to air drying clays to make sure that once your pack is actually open, you keep it in one of these sort of things, which is a uh, Ziploc airtight bag. That's really, really important. Otherwise, because it's air drying, the, the, the clay will actually um, dry. So just make sure that once you open the pack, so pop it inside there. So let's just take some clay out. Now, what we're going to be doing to start with is creating some of the beautiful roses that you saw on the project. So just take some of the clay out of the bag. Now, this is... Um, a really quite a dry clay compared to other clays that I've actually used but it's absolutely ideal for making the flowers so what I'm just quickly going to do is I'm just going to use a rolling pin okay a nylon rolling pin I'm just going to roll some of the um, clay out just quite roughly just to start with we're going to be using the medium cutter so the reason I'm doing this just really really quickly is so we don't mix up too much clay so at the moment, I'm not too concerned about actually keeping the shapes that I cut. I just want to know that I'm just going to mix up near enough the right amount of clay. OK, so let's just pop that one. OK, right. So we can see we have two there. That's what we're going to be needing in total. And I'm just going to add a little bit more extra. Right. So pop the clay back inside your bag. So this is the bright and light clay we're using. So pop it back inside your flip flop bag and there we go, just pop that aside. Right, we're going to be using the, the dense foam mat there to actually add some shape to the petals. But let's just pop that aside for the moment. Right, so we're going to want a colour. We're going to go with two distressed colours here. We're going to go for festive berries and abandoned coral as well. So just pop some of that onto your mat. So that's going to give you a nice mix of colours. Obviously you can be using whatever colours you like for your project. So just mop that up and you can see the clay will then take on the colour of the distress oxide. Okay. Now, other things you can be using, apart from distress oxides, you can be using acrylic paints as well. So there's a, a nice array of different uh, mediums that you can be popping into there. If you have the Ecoline pens, then again, they're water-based, so you can be using those to colour as well. So just keep on building up the colour until you're happy with, with what you want. So like I say, just keep on mopping that up and then just literally just folding the colour into the clay until you are happy. So I'm just going to continue to do that. 
just mop that one up like so and just keep on going now obviously because as i said to you this clay is um a quite a dry clay as we're now adding some moisture into there using the distress oxides or what other um, medium you're going to be using Oops. then obviously um you're going to be adding some moisture back into the clay so once it's actually done you will need to just let it dry out just a little bit but again not too long okay so just keep on mixing those colors into your clay until you're happy with what you have now obviously we've got some leaves as well and the leaves that we're going to be colouring a little bit later on, we're going to be using some acrylic paints to do that. So I'm just going to show you how you could be doing that. Right. OK, I think we're just going to add a little bit more of the festive berries just to make that colour a little bit deeper. But like I say, it's entirely up to you. OK. And the other colour we're going to be going for is um, cream roses in this project. And the colour that I've used for that one is the um, let me just grab that from up here and that one is the vintage photo so that's the one where i've actually used to create the cream color roses that are also within this project okay right we're near enough done and that's the sort of the color that i'm gonna be wanting for this particular project okay right and like i say just knead that in until you've got a real Good consistency of colour. OK, right. So let's just pop the colours aside for the moment. Um, another really important thing is just to make sure that the surface here is clean and also dry. You can, if you want, just add a little bit of cornflour to the surface. That's just going to help stop the clay from actually sticking okay like so so let's just roll this out now what it actually recommends on the instructions is that you roll this out to about one millimeter thick now there is a way of doing that quite easily okay when you get yourself one of these nylon rollers you'll see these rings that come with it there's two different thicknesses um, depending which one you actually get but majority of the time you'll see that one is about a millimeter and a half and the other one you get on there is between about about two two and a half millimeters now i go for about one millimeter so it's nice with those now don't worry you know you can be using the thinner ones but what i actually do i actually have some one millimeter card okay so i just place that either side of my clay and then I know that what's rolled out in between it is going to be about one millimetre thick. So I'm just going to roll that one out. OK, now this is the cutter. Like I say, this is the medium one. OK, so just roll that out and just keep on going back and forth until it's, it's really nice. Very so often, just keep on lifting it just to make sure it is going to come off there. OK, and as you can see, that is our one millimetre thick piece of clay so we're just going to use the medium cutter we're just going to press all the way around there okay like so and just lift that off and then just pull off the excess clay we're going to be using um, one of the tools from FMM this these are great tools you get five in there all different tools so that is one piece we're just going to pop that aside for the moment so we're going to cut both at the same time OK, let's so just roll that one out. OK, now obviously if there is any leftover um, coloured clay, then just pop that inside of your air dry bag. And so just keep on lifting it off, just turning around. We just want to make sure we have enough clay just for this cutter. There we go. Maybe if this one has got three that we can cut out of it we will do so just keep on going there like so okay and then just lift that up pull away the clay and that is our second piece now to make a rose you can make a smallish rose from one piece 
and a medium rose from about two. Or you can make a really large rose using three of these shapes. I think we're actually going to go for three purely because we've actually got them. So like I say, this is how you actually make the rose. Okay. So just keep on rolling. Keep on lifting it just to make sure it's not going to stick. You can flip it if you wish. Okay, we're near enough there using our one millimeter card just so we know that it's near enough one millimeter we're actually rolling that clay out too and again we're just going to pop that one on and just press that down okay and just pop that back like so okay so with the clay we have left over there we're just going to roll that one up okay you can pop it inside some cellophane if you wish, or just pop it inside your bag. I'd recommend that if you know you're not going to use it, to actually put it in a, some cling film. Right, okay, here we go. So we're just going to pop this one up here. Don't worry too much if it loses a little bit of its shape on some of the petals. It doesn't matter. Okay, so we just got now three of the shapes there. And the next stage is we're actually going to roll them out. Right, we have our three cut shapes here. Now we're going to be using the ball tool that also comes in uh, the same set as the other tool that we used a little bit earlier. So that's the FMM uh, five piece tool set there. So what you're going to want to do is use your foam mat. I work diagonally across this because obviously that gives us then the maximum amount of space to work with. So using your ball tool, go from about the center of the petal, rolling the tool outwards, okay? You just want to go beyond the actual um, size or the shape of the clay to give that sort of like fanned effect. Now you can also see by doing that, okay, you're also sort of like giving it a little bit of shape in there as well to make those petals, okay? So it's up to you, there's two different ends to this tool. You've got the small ball tool and the large ball tool. Entirely up to you which one you want to go with, okay? So just go all the way round. And as you can see, we are making those petals actually larger. So just go all the way around and it's a case of just pressing from the center of the flower and going beyond the actual size of the piece of clay or the petal there. So go all the way. You can keep on going back over the petals just to make them a little bit more uneven because um, you don't want it to be exactly perfect petals on every single one. You want to make sure they're all different sizes, just exactly the same as it would be in nature. Right, once you have one, okay, we're just going to pull that one up very, very carefully. You can see now you have all those beautiful petals. Right, the next thing is to actually just flip that over and then fold it in half, okay? So it's like so. And then just press down just on the edge that you actually folded okay now i use the pointy part of this tool to actually then start to roll okay so just pop that on there and just start to roll the whole load of clay actually around that once you've gone around about once okay which is about that then you can just lift that up and then you can start to roll OK, don't roll too tightly. Leave it fairly loose. OK, so like so. So that's the sort of um, consistency of roll you actually want. So not too tight. OK, and it's going to give you that sort of effect. OK, we're just going to pop that one to the side and we're just going to do exactly the same to the other two. So like I say, if you want a smallish rose, maybe you just want a bud, then just go for the one. If you want a sort of medium sized rose, then go for two of the, the shapes that we're rolling out at the moment. If you want sort of like a larger rose, it's got lots and lots of petals, then go for three. But it's entirely up to you. You know, maybe you want an even larger rose. Maybe you want to go for four. Entirely up to you. Now, FMM actually do three different size cutters. Like I say, for this particular rose that I'm making at the moment, we are using the medium size one. 
but you've also got the smaller and the larger one as well. <clears throat> right, so just go all the way around like so. Okay, and you can see how quick and how easy this is. So that's our second one. So again, just using this tool just to flip that up. Now, if at any point, okay, that you pull this up and maybe a petal has got stuck to the red mat, then don't worry. All you need to do is just basically screw the, the clay back up into a ball and then just roll it out again. So there's never any waste, okay? So again, just fold that one over like so, and then just press down on the edge that you folded. Now you want to bring back in your original one, okay? And this is where you just want to join it, okay? So you can see where you've got the two end petals, okay? You just want to join the first one, just slightly overlapping, okay, like so. And then just pop that back on your mat and just roll all of the way around, okay? So now you can see it's actually starting to look much more like a rose. So again, just pop that one aside. We're just gonna go for the third one now. Okay, and using the large ball tool. Okay, we're just gonna roll that out from the center of the petal. Okay, like so. And it doesn't take any time whatsoever. Okay, now what you will need is, well, I use just one of these, which is just basically a washi tape, okay? But it's something to actually pop the, the rose in, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain that in a second. But if you've got something like that, or maybe you've got um, an egg container, that's gonna do as well. So just to rest the actual rose in when you're actually working with it on the next step. So just keep on rolling that out, okay? And like I say, if you wanted more, for the fr frilliness to your petals, then maybe you could have used the, the smaller ball tool on the other end there. Um, but I'm going to be happy with this one. Okay, so you really want to pop a lot of pressure on. But like I say, when you're actually rolling this ball tool, you're not you're not pulling it. You're actually rolling the tool. Okay, that's really really important. If you drag it, then the tendency is you're actually going to tear the clay. So just using our other tool here. Okay. Just pop that one up, pull that up, and again, just fold, fold that over. Okay, so where you fold it, you then just press down just to make sure it actually sticks. Okay, and then get your, your piece that's already got two of these wound round. So let's just show again where you want to join these. So here are the two end pieces. So you just want to go just slightly overlap on the first one, like so, and then you can start to roll around. Okay, so if we actually look at that at the moment, you'll you'll see it sort of looks like a rose, apart from at the moment it's a bit like a barrel. Okay, so what we're going to do is just very, very gently just squeeze. And I do mean very gently, just start to squeeze, but go all the way around. You can see I'm rotating that, and I am also applying a little bit of pressure. So just keep on going all the way around. Don't squeeze too much too soon, because it will completely distort the shape of your finished rose. Okay, so just keep on going around, just applying a little bit of pressure whilst you're spinning that. And as you can see now, it's starting to look like sort of like a, a, a wine glass shape. Okay, and once you've got to that, then just using your fingers, okay, just apply a little bit of pressure and I'm spinning the rose as we go. You can see it's, it's like getting the neck of that glass there and it's also giving us more of a rose shape. Okay, so just keep on going until you get to about that point and then you can just twist that round and there we go, there is our beautiful rose shape. So we're just gonna pop that in the hole there on our mat just to hold it up. And the clay you have here, just pop that back into your airtight bag. So we're just going to mix that back in with the clay that we already mixed a little bit earlier. Pop that into there and just make sure you've got as much um, air out of that. Right, so 
this is where our little piece of tape comes in. So we're going to pop that into there, okay? And we're just gonna hold that, okay? And then we can just go around and using the, the sort of the knife part of the tool, we just want to start separating those petals out. So you can go quite deep actually into there, <clears throat> okay? And just start to literally edge out those. I'm just gonna take it out of here for the moment. Okay, we're just going to keep on just very, very carefully. And you can use your fingers to a certain extent as well. And you just want to separate out some of those petals just to make it look as though it's alive. OK, the, the, the rose bud is no longer a bud. It's, it's more of a flower. So it's all opened up. OK, so just keep on going around there. Like I say, pop the, the tool quite deep into, into the folds. OK, and then just keep on just working your way around, seeing which petals you want to um, just pull out a little bit. Obviously, the ones in the center, you can leave more than the ones on the outer edge. So just keep on going back around. Keep on twisting the rows round. OK, there we go. And this tool, it really, really does work extremely well for this particular method of just separating out some of those petals. OK, so once you're actually happy with that, then you can actually place it back inside your little holder. And like I say, I'm just using a washi tape. OK, so just keep on. OK, maybe I'm a bit over the top when I do these roses, <laughs> but you know, they really, really are um, nice and easy to do. But it's just a case of making them look sort of like as, as natural as possible. I'm going to leave it at that. OK, so that is going to take about 24 hours to dry. So as I say, I just pop it inside there just so it it just holds everything in place. OK, as you can see. And then I'm just going to leave that to dry for 24 hours. So make all of your roses in exactly the same way. You can then go back in. We will. I'll show you that a little bit later. And um, we can just add a little bit more colour to the petals. But that's basically the, the basics of making a beautiful rose really, really nice and easily using the, the Easy Cutters roses from FMM. Right, as promised earlier, now we're going to colour some of the leaves, OK, we're going to be using. So we're going to use some of the, the light and bright clay yet again, OK. So probably about that much, OK, because I've already made the majority of the roses for this project. So again, pop it back inside the bag and then just squeeze as much air and just lock that in. OK, right. Here we go then. So we're just going to be using some acrylic paint this time. This can be a little bit messy, but it's fun. OK, just pop about that much into the clay and then just start kneading that in. You'll see it starts to get a little bit messy, but don't worry if it's only your fingers, you can you can easily clean your fingers. OK, right. Let's just mix some of that in there. OK, and you can see how quick. That starts to colour that. If you want it a little bit deeper, just add a little bit more colour. So I think we're just going to add a little bit more in there to the mix. OK, if you want to make it darker, then obviously I'd go for some black, but just pop that inside there and then just fold it in. You know, yes, you're going to get a little bit on your fingers, but like I say, you can always clean them. Right. So let's just go for for that. Now, obviously, as I said, um, when we coloured the roses, because you're adding quite a lot of moisture inside the clay now, OK, it is probably just an idea just to let that dry a little bit. OK, so we're just going to pop that aside. OK, we're just going to roll that. OK, you can flatten it out just a little bit. OK, and we're just going to let that dry just for a few minutes, probably about five minutes. 
uh, but when we come back that's going to be dry enough to actually use with the cutters right we have our piece of green clay we have our two pieces of one millimeter card we're just going to roll that out okay so like so just one mil thick thickness okay we're just going to now place it onto a piece of non-stick um, paper this is actually an old peel off sticker believe it or not okay so once all you've your peel offs have um, gone then this is what i actually use this for so nothing ever goes to waste these are the veiners okay from fmm and in the pack it, this is set one you're gonna get four different shapes so there are the four different shapes okay and each of them has as you can see just very, very slightly different types of veins on there just to make your leaves look a little bit more realistic. OK, so we're just going to pop that onto the clay. We're just going to press down like so. OK. And then just peel that away. And you can just see there. Can you just see that? That is, there we go, the impression of the leaf. So now we have a leaf with veins so we're just going to use one of the cutters there's three different sizes these are the rose leaf cutters line it up so it um, the, the veins are like in the right position once you're happy just press down like so okay and then just take the cutter away and then just peel that back and there we go that is your your rose okay your rose leaf all nice cut and also veined as well so just peel that just gently back from your non-stick piece of paper okay now what I would recommend here is you grab yourself a piece of cardboard I'm just going to use um, an old tool like this okay let me just grab a piece of cardboard from under my desk okay a piece of an old piece of card there so I'm just going to lay my tool actually on there okay and then I'm just going to lay the leaf over so just bend it very very slightly okay and then just let it rest on there so you can see it's it's going to not create a completely flat leaf maybe you do want some flat leaves as well but that's the sort of shape that I want that one to set in and again just let that one dry for about 24 hours before we do anything else okay so that's um the leaves let me just quickly show you also how to create some of the letters that are also on the project so let me again let me just roll that clay up we're just going to pop that back inside here okay i'm just going to grab a little bit of the white clay now admit it, this hasn't got to be white clay in, 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 in all fairness because we're actually going to color this black a little bit later on but again just so you can see um, from my every single step, I'm just going to use a piece of white clay. Right, so again, make sure that that is not too sticky, which is not the surface. And again, I'm using our two bits of cardboard either side there. Just roll that out. We have our perfect one mil um, thick clay. Now we're going to bring in these. These are the the Art Deco um, alphabet set. And within this, you're gonna get the entire alphabet and you're also gonna get uh, numbers, okay? So that is the, the three um, cutter sets you're gonna get in that particular set. They're all uppercase. They're about two centimeters in height as well. Right, so to, to cut, okay, let's just pop that onto here. So put it onto your non-stick card okay a really important thing here just to make sure that um, your your cutter is clear of any old bits of clay so particularly in little areas like on the a or the b's there where it's got little holes sometimes you can forget and the clay still in there okay so literally you've got your clay onto your non-stick card here and then literally you just pop your letter and just press that Give it a little bit of a, a move around just so you know it's cut okay lift that up okay and you'll see the letter is actually stuck in there we don't want the b so let's just take out the b part okay and if they don't come out straight away don't worry just tap 
Okay. Like so. And there we have, let me just pop that over there, our letter A. Okay, so again, just pop that onto a piece of card or onto kitchen cloth and let that dry. Right, we're just going to roll out one more letter. Okay, so we're just going to go using our two pieces of cards just there. Okay, we're just going to use some, let's have a look, some corn flour. Tap any excess out. We're just going to use some corn flour. Okay, just in the actual cut there, just to help a little bit. Um, release the letter okay we're just going to use our sheet of non-stick paper there also known as our peel off there's letter b we're just going to cut that one into there just give it a little bit of wiggle okay and then we're just going to pop that down and there is our letter b okay so you can just keep on going like I say, leave those to dry. Let's just do another quick one as well. Again, remember to take out all little bits inside the letters. They're still in there. So we're just going to roll this one out again. Okay. Okay, let's just go that way. Pop that onto our non-stick. I think we're going to go for the letter O this time. So just a little bit of corn flour. Oops, let's just pop some corn flour in the letter O. Okay, just give it a little tap and there's our letter O just there. So again, just press that, give a little bit of a wiggle, take off all the clay that you don't need straight away and then just and there is the O. Okay, Whoops, just pop that one around. Okay, there's the O. So just keep on going until you get all letters that you want in your particular project. Okay, that's all the letters done. Next, we're just going to show you how to use the soft, then strong uh, polymer clay. But in the meantime, I'm just going to have a little tidy up. Right, we have our roses, we have our leaves and we have our letters. We're just going to add a couple of flourishes to the project as well. So we're going to use a Prima redesign mould. Okay, we're going to use these elements here. Now, what I'm going to be using for this one is not the, um, the bright and light clay, although you can, but I'm going to use soft then strong. Okay, so this is a polymer air drying clay. Okay, I just wanted to show how this is used. And now, because this is a polymer clay, okay, it is waterproof once it's actually um, dried. Okay, and yes, you can still make beautiful roses with it as well. Okay, and it does dry extremely strong. So maybe you want this um, for a piece of jewelry or something, then this is the type of clay that you're gonna be wanting to use. So that's the soft then strong. So it comes to you in a silver bag and then inside that there's clean film, okay? And this is your clay. It is a little bit more sticky, okay? And I'll be honest with you, I don't really think that you're going to be able to pop, pop this into a mould and then drag it out, depending how dry it is, okay, in, in one fell swoop. So what I'm just going to do, I'm going to pop this into the mould, okay, like so. Don't worry about any of the clay on the, on the top part. I normally tell people whenever they're using moulds, to make sure you tuck all the clay back inside but some of the the, the, the prima molds in particular are rather detailed and you'd probably give up halfway around trying to tuck the clay back inside then like i say because this is slightly more sticky than um a lot of the other clays okay i just tend to leave this inside of the mold okay and let it um, just dry within that. Now it does take about 24 to 72 hours to, to dry inside the mold. So just bear that in mind. But now I'm just using a large um, sort of like pallet knife. Okay, a plastic one. 
and I'm just going over the very top here as you can see of the, the mold and I have just taken all of the clay off or thereabouts all the clay and then I'm just going to go back in there okay with my fingers and just press out just to make sure we've got all the detail in there but you can see it has cleaned up all of the clay the majority of the clay from the top part of that mold leave that to dry but like i say just make sure you press press it in just to make sure you get all the detail if you want to you can be using um the other clay like um the the clay that we've used to um, make the, the roses because this is air dry clay and especially really important with the, the polymer dry clay pop it back inside your clean film okay like so and really make sure that is very very airtight pop it back inside its original packaging and then um, pop that inside your ziplock bag okay so just open that one up and just pop that inside there and again just press all that out right so again just pop this one to the side if you wanted to use the other clay okay you can do and the way you do that is you just dust this out with the um, corn flour you'd then pop your clay actually in there and that would be the, the bright and light and then you could literally just pop it out but like I say I want these to really really last okay so I have actually used the um, the soft then strong so like I say leave that in the mold between 24 and 72 hours to actually set okay so we're just going to pop that aside and we're going to start to decorate the actual plaque right we have our plaque this is a uh, basically it's a piece of wood I found in my garage um, it's a piece of MDF so I've just cut that to size this could um, be a canvas board, it could be just some uh, grey board that you have lying around. So that is my canvas and just for those of you who want to know the sort of size we're talking here, we're talking 20 centimetres wide by 18 centimetres in height and I've just gessoed that over. A lot of people don't use gesso where it comes to MDF but I want to use um, a light colour blue on top of it so I really want that colour to show through and not what's underneath. I'm actually using um, Viva Decor um, vintage look and these are just chalky paints okay so I've gone for a blue, I've gone for a darker blue and then I've gone for a white. Okay so first of all I'm just going to Put the light blue on okay and this is a really really beautiful um, paint so just going to go all the way over that just with a brush okay and I'm not going to worry too much if some of the white actually shows through because I'm going to sort of like put um, a cloudy type finish over the top okay so let's just quickly just drag the color all over there if you want, you can be using a sponge to apply the colour. Entirely up to you. And as you can see, I just apply it really, really, really quite randomly to start with. Just so I've got the coverage that I want. And then I'll go back over just in one direction to just to smooth everything out. OK, so that is the, the blue near enough done. OK, and I do love chalk paints I love the, the matteness of them and then they're not glossy and that really then shows up your, your pieces on your project I find right so let's just then go in one direction like so now obviously if you haven't got um, chalk paints you could be using possibly emulsion paints okay exactly the same sort of stuff that you'd use on your walls in your house or maybe you've got some nice wallpaper as long as it's not overly patterned then you could be using that or some rice papers mulberry papers you can really go to town entirely up to you how you want to decorate it maybe you even want to go for some uh, distress inks or even even some alcohol inks try those and just just have a play if you're going to be doing that then maybe you want to to coat the top of the mdf with some some yuppie um paper in, like I say, entirely up to you what sort of look you want to achieve. Right, so that is um, our first coat, so that is our light blue. I'm just going to let that dry before we go on to the second set. 
So I'm just going to dry that and then we'll be back. Right, so the, the blue is dry. We're just going to add some uh, white over top to like a, a cloudy type of effect. OK, so this is again the chalk paint. OK, this time I'm actually going to use a sponge brush, OK, to actually apply this. But first of all, let's just take some of the paint. We're just going to pop it into the lid, OK, like so. I'm just going to add a little bit of water onto a sponge brush, OK, like so. And then we're literally just going to pounce that over the top there. Just add a little bit more of the white paint. OK, no particular science as to how much um, colour we need to put in at a time. But we just want like, say, a, a sort of like a watery a consistency, just so it's almost like 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 clouds as such. OK, so just dab that onto uh, the top of the blue there. OK, so just keep on going. So that's the sort of look that we want. So and just like fade out around the edges. I've still got some colour on there. A little bit more water. Like I said, we don't want it too um, solid colour. That's it, just like that. So just keep on going around. Okay, if you think you're running out of colour, just add a little bit more back into there. Okay, so just keep on keep on going till you're happy with the sort of look of that I think that's probably about it I would say okay just a little bit more up there okay you can get carried away a little bit okay that's going to do I'm just going to pop that into the water along with my brush okay pop the lid back on top of my white chalk paint and then again, we're just going to let the white dry. Then we're going to go round the edge using the darker blue. Right, our clouds have now dried. So we're just going to go round the edge using some of the darker um, blue chalk paint. Let's just give that a little bit of a shake. Let's see. OK, this is probably going to be a little bit dark to start with, but we're not going to we're not going to pop too much on at a time. So literally. OK, we're just going to build up, build up the colour. We're applying that with a sponge brush. OK, so just keep on going on. Like I said, don't do it all in one go because it will be a little bit too much. So just keep on dabbing, go all the way around all four sides. OK, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And maybe just add a little bit more colour. As I said, you don't want to over, you don't want to overdo it. OK, so just keep on, just keep on just bringing in that colour almost so it's like a, a real light graduation between the light blue and the clouds and the dark. So you don't want a, a really abrupt edge. So just just keep on just pouncing your sponge brush just on there like so okay so just go all the way around okay i will continue to do this and then when you come back it will all be done right that's the base of my canvas finish so i'm just going to put that aside for one moment i'm just going to bring in um this one here which are all of the letters and the flourishes that we made using the Prima Redesign mould. So all of these need to be painted black. So that's what I'm going to do. Then when I come back, I'm going to show you how to give them that sort of finish that makes them look almost like metal. So like I say, first of all, I'm just going to use some acrylic black paint and I'm going to do these letters and these flourishes. Well, as you can see, I have painted all of the letters and the flourishes as well. So now we're going to paint them. I'm going to be using um, some paints from Cadence. These are water-based gilding paints, OK? But if you have things like gilding waxes, then that's going to work equally as well. Now, I've actually going to uh, I've actually gone for two different colours. I've gone for like a, an antique gold and an antique silver. I always put the gold on first. So we're going to use the dry brush technique. We're going to do this to the letters as well. So just 
a little little bit and I do mean that much okay and then we're just going to brush that on so just a little bit on there and we're just going to brush that just over some of the flourishes there so like I say it's not a case of it's accurate painting it is dry brush technique okay so you're just going to want to be doing a little bit on your brush and then just lightly just brushing that on and basically the the paintbrush is going to find the the high points or the low points if you put a little bit of pressure on there to to get right down to the bottom parts of in this case the the cast that we've made from the prima redesign mold so that is our first color okay and now we're just going to go for the second color we're not going to really bother to clean the brush in between because we won't really need to and like i say this is the smallest amount of that one as well okay so let's just pop that one out of the way and then it is just a case of just a little bit of the silver this is the antique silver by the way and it is just literally just brushing it on in a couple of places possibly where the gold didn't quite hit okay so just a little bit of the paint onto your brush and go all of the way around. So you still basically aim is it's still to see some of the, the black undercoat. OK, and it's just going to give you that sort of illusion of maybe like raw time, that, that type of thing. So just keep on going round like so very little paint on your brush as you can see what i'm doing here i'm just brushing a lot of it back onto the glass mat okay and i think we're just about happy with that there we go that is one piece so you can see from that to that so there's two colors on there. there's like an antique golden antique silver and it really really does bring them up beautifully it just adds a little bit more interest so where the letters are concerned okay we're just going to go for a little one here to start with so we're just going to go from l okay so literally just brush on okay obviously these are a little bit more tricky to handle than the larger flourishes doesn't matter okay so just onto there so keep on twisting it round okay and then just turn our brush over we're going to go into the silver okay so just a little bit of silver on there just to highlight some of those bits so you can still see like i say the undercoat there of the black so let's just hold up one of those and one of those and you can see just how much it transforms it makes it a little bit more interesting i'm going to go ahead and do the rest of the letters and then we're going to place um, them and the flourishes on our canvas board right i have painted all of the letters the swirls so now before we actually put those onto the canvas i'm just going to pop those aside one moment i'm just going to show you how i'm going to further enhance both the rose and the leaf itself right so these are all dry and you can see all of the amazing beautiful detail that is in the rose but we can just add a little bit more so if you can remember way way back when we first started we used the abandoned coral and we also use the festive berries so what we're going to do now is we're just going to use one of the colors which is the abandoned coral and we're just going to take some up on the brush okay then just dab that onto our mat because it's like a dry brush technique and then we're just going to just very very gently just go onto the petals okay i'm not applying too much pressure so the ink is only being taken up by basically the, the high points of each of those petals. OK, so let's just keep on going round. OK, and some underneath there as well. So like I say, just very, very gently, not applying too much pressure. OK, 
they just keep on going. So every time I pop the brush back on the pad, I'm always going back then onto my glass. Okay, so just keep, keep on brushing. Okay, and you'll see the difference. It's just bringing out that detail. And of course, that detail was originally made by the ball tool when we were just um, shaping these um, those original leaves on the actual rose. There we go. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, you can just see a little bit there of the beautiful tones that um, are then bought out using the the paints. So there we go. That's um, the, the 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 rose leaf itself. The next one. Um, sorry, that that was the rose. Now it's the rose leaf itself. Okay. So for this one, let me just quickly. Just dab that out of the way so we don't want any pink going onto the, the leaves. Right, so we're just going to use a little bit of white. And I do mean a little bit. Okay, so again, we're just going to be using that dry brush technique. So literally, that will probably do us actually. Okay, and we're just going to brush into the very, very center of, of this leaf. Okay, so you can see you can almost see like the green sort of like showing through it's just a very very it's almost like a highlight on on the leaf okay and you can see there it's also bringing out the veining texture a little bit more so as well okay so just go over there i think we just add a little bit more white to that okay so just grabbed it from the, the lid there and we're just going to brush that in, okay. So only do this once your your leaves, your clay leaves are dry, okay. And then just sort of like brush it out so it's almost just going into, it's fading into into the green, okay. If that makes sense. Okay, right there we go. Right, just let that one um, dry just a little bit. Well, actually beforehand, let me just, I'm just going to add a little bit of water. Okay, just a little bit of water. Okay. So just going to fade out just a little bit more. Okay. Like so. Okay, that's a little bit better. Right, now we're just going to go in with the same colour green that we actually used to colour the leaves. So let's just mop that bit out a little bit. Okay, so it's this colour green just here. So hopefully there's there's some still left. Okay, let's just okay that amount. Okay, and we need to darken it just a little bit. Okay, so we are literally just going to darken that probably by just there we go. Just putting the paintbrush into the nozzle. Okay. And so that's a darker colour green. Okay, so that's going to go on the edge of the leaves. Okay, and again, we don't want too much paint on here. So just grab yourself a cloth there. Just wipe the brush on there. And then, there we go. We're just going to... There's that dry brushing technique yet again that we've used throughout this project. And it will just subtly, subtly just fade that colouring into the centre. Well, not quite the centre, sorry, into, into, the, into the white. Okay, it's so just a little, little, little bit on that. Okay, just a little bit. And just keep on going, just, just blending it in. And there, there is your leaf done. Let that one dry, okay. And then what you need to do, just to make it look a little bit more realistic, is is a glaze now the glaze that i'm going to be using is from viva decor and um it's a clear coat um and it will just help add a little bit of shine let me just grab a leaf so here is one i did earlier and you can see it's just got that shimmer but that one hasn't at the moment okay so that's the that's the sort of effect that we're going to be getting so i'm gonna um coat this one with the, the the clear lacquer or the varnish and then we can uh, start to put all of the letters and 
all of the flourishes onto the, the plaque or the canvas. Right, I've now placed all of the letters and the flourishes in place on my canvas. OK, now the one I've stuck is this one here. This one is still loose. The reason being, I want to use a piece of cardboard that I know has a square edge because this is going to help me stick all of my letters in place perfectly. OK, so the longest word we can see there is forever. OK, that's um, taking up the the most um, width out of all of them. So that's the one we want to focus on um, first and actually stick that down in place. So like I say, I'm going to take off all of the other words, OK, for the moment. And then we will be able to concentrate on the, the word forever. So let me just take these off. Right, OK, we have the two words there left. So I'm just going to stick this one on here. We'll just place this piece of card on. We can just budge up just a little bit there. OK, right. So we don't want that one to move. And then all we need to do is start to stick the letters in place. So let me just move them along a little bit. OK, and then we will come back and we will do the word love in a moment okay let's just see so you don't need too too close to the edge okay we think we can come down just a little bit like so okay right and then we're going to be using um, a PVA type glue for, for this one and then we're just going to stick every single letter in place. So we're going to start from this end, so we're going to go with the R. So this, the sort of glues that, that you'll, you'll need if you're going to be um, sticking things on is basically a, a PVA or, or 3D um, type glue like a silicon. Okay, so let's just place all of those down. Now, if you're anything like me, OK, uh, I'm, I'm infamous for my typos. OK, so you may actually want to to write down what your what your verse or, or your, your, yeah, your, your short verse is actually um, going to be. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and stick all these down and then we'll come back and uh, we'll do the, the second word, which is love. Right, so once we've got to that point, we then just need to grab ourselves a ruler and grab ourselves a pen or a pencil. OK, I just want to measure what is that longest word. OK, so our longest word there is 11 centimetres. So making sure that this part of the cardboard is with, at the edge of your canvas or your canvas board. Um, make sure that's on there and then just go down there and you can see the the width of this particular one forever is 11 centimeters so half of 11 is 5.5 so that is basically the the center of every single um, letter thereafter okay right so now we're just going to just place that above here okay like so again just keeping it straight we want to roughly go let's just play with the letters a little bit we don't want them too far apart but we don't want them too close if that makes sense okay about there okay so we can place that that is going to be our line so just make sure. Right, let's see how large or, or in width how, how far the word love actually is. And so we place that out roughly at the moment. So we're talking about six centimetres. So the letter L has got to start there at three because the centre of six centimetres, which is the width of the word love, is actually three and then repeat that process going down the page for every single um, word and here's the last 
letter just going in in between the two E's there and then we are done with the lettering. So let's just take away the piece of cardboard and then we'll be able to see <clears throat> if everything lines up nicely, which it does using that particular technique that I've just shown you there. You can just adjust any of those bottom letters there. And now we want to just add on the, the last flourish. Now, because we actually used the other type of clay, which is the soft then strong. This is the, the air dry polymer clay. So you can see it's still very flexible, even though it's actually dried. And like I say, that's why it is really, really good for things like jewelry. Um, I'm gonna use um, a silicon um, based glue on here, on the back here. So just a couple of little dabs of that, okay. And then we're just going to place that on. And then we're just going to put a little bit of weight actually on this flourish just so it um, glues nice and flat into position. So let me just very carefully just flip this one over. I'm going for the same sort of alignment as I've done this one up here. So we're about there. They're about level. And we're just going to pop that down just there. Now, obviously if I wanted, you know, I could have actually brought that further down, but I'm going to want to put some leaves just here. Um, so we obviously don't want the leaves to actually go over any of our words just there. So I'm just going to place some weight on top of that flourish there. And then once that's set, then we're going to come back and we're going to add lots of um, the, the roses and the leaves there just to add that splash of color to finish off our project. Okay, the last part, like I said before, is just to add the, the flowers and obviously the leaves. So how I do this, I sort of like just roughly put them how I want them to start with. Okay, now when you actually make these, the, the bottom of the rows has still got like a sort of like a dome to it. So what I normally tend to do is just to cut those so they're um, flat. So I just use a large craft knife, okay, like so. So I want that one slightly coming down there. And I literally just cut, let me just move that one there. I literally just cut basically the angle that I want the, the flower to actually sit at. Okay, and this one, it's quite a big row, so there's a lot of cutting involved there. Okay, and now it has a perfectly flat bottom, which now will sit absolutely beautifully onto the canvas. So I'm gonna go and uh, position and cut all of these accordingly. And then I'm going to be back and then we can actually um, finish the project by sticking um, the leaves in place as well. So, like I say, I'm just going to cut all the backs off all of the roses so they're nice and flat and just so they, they sit perfectly with, within our canvas. I've just finished the project now and glued all the leaves into place, added a little bit of garden string that I plaited earlier on and that's it. It's all finished and ready to hang. I hope this project has inspired you to have a go with FMM's products and if you're interested in buying them please go direct to their website at www.fmmfuncraft.com I hope you can join me on Hochanda really soon with more fantastic products from FMM Fun Crafts.